Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of Q on Q. I'm so honored that you've decided to join me and listen to our podcast this week. Whether you've tuned into a previous episode or you're a return listener or whether you're a listener for the first time, welcome. In Q on Q, I look forward to talking with you, sharing with you, and hopefully inspiring you in the days and weeks to come. In Q on Q, I'll be sharing about life, inspiration, music, family, and a little bit of everything in between. Well, for this week's episode, there is a note guide available for you. We encourage you to download it and follow along as we uh, go. You can fill it in with some notes or just follow along with the scriptures and quotes as we go. It is available now at our website. Our website is qonq.com. Again, that is spelled Q-O-N-Q-U-E-U-E dot com. For me, this week's topic is something that I've had a lot of firsthand experience with during recent years. And for many of us, it's very important very timely, and very relevant. And that is the topic of giants in our lives. It's easy to talk about giants as long as they're lumbering on somebody else's landscape, but when you discover one is at your doorstep, or even as close as inside your head, you realize how intimidating a giant can be. Giants work most effectively in valleys, and when we allow our giant to take control, it's like we're in a valley with a steep climb of a giant mountain ahead of us. Giants can have a wide variety of names and can come in many, many forms, whether it's fear or the giant of pride or envy or addiction or depression or somebody has wronged you or you have wronged someone else or anger or something else. The truth is, is that this giant, whatever it is, or whatever they are, if there's more than one, has a grip on you. And today, our society is gripped by giants. But most of the time, we fail to identify the cause and the cure of what is really ailing us. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the most famous giant in the Bible, and that's a story from 1 Samuel, the story of David and Goliath. Standing over 9 feet 9 inches tall, Goliath controlled the atmosphere wherever he was because he was so big and looked so undefeatable. I want to share that story with you, at least part of it, right now. It is in 1 Samuel 17 verses 32 through 47 and I'll be reading this out of the amplified version of the scriptures it says David said to Saul let no man's courage fail because of him Goliath your servant will go out and fight with this Philistine then Saul said to David you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight him for you are only a young man and he has been a warrior since his youth But David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and attacked it and rescued the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose up against me, I seized it by its whiskers and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, since he has taunted and defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his garments and put a bronze helmet on his head and put a coat of mail armor on him. Then David fastened his sword over his armor and tried to walk, but he could not because he was not used to them. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these because I'm not used to them. So David took them off. Then he took his shepherd's staff in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones out of the stream bed and put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, that is, in his shepherd's pouch. With his sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. The Philistine came and approached David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked around and saw David, he derided and disparaged him because he was just a young man with a ruddy complexion and a handsome appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with shepherd's staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine also said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. 
This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the corpses of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will hand you over to us. When looking at someone like Goliath, victory seems impossible. Often, the big problems in our lives look, frankly, undefeatable. Goliath created an environment of fear, and in our lives, it's often the same thing. The giants that taunt us just won't go away, which makes victory seem nearly impossible. Instead of confidence and calm, this leads to fear and doubt. The giant struck fear, (laughs) struck fear and intimidation in everyone. Except David. In his role of tending to the sheep, David faced many, many battles. He probably warded off many lions and bears and had to organize large groups of animals that listened little to commands and were difficult to hurt. He was seen by most as just a kid with little experience and little chance of facing a giant such as Goliath. But with confidence, David said, The Lord who delivered me out of the paw of a lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. The giant came at David with great advantage, height, strength, and protection. But David came in the name of the Lord who the giant defied. David didn't just approach Goliath, he ran at him. Think of it like football. David was playing offense. And just like David... We should not be living in a defensive mode when it comes to our giants. Goliath was insulted that David approached him. But David let Goliath know that he was coming to him in the name of the Lord. He handed the challenging situation off to God because he was operating in God's strength, not his own, in covenant with him. When you tackle a giant and are connected in the spirit, you have the blessing of being coveted by God and his power. Picture it as going after your giant with a whole army beside you, above you, and behind you. And we all know how the story ends. I'll pick up reading at verse 48. When the Philistine rose and came forward to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand into his bag and took out a stone and slung it, and it struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone penetrated his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and he struck down the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in David's hand. David quickly ran out to meet Goliath. In human power, he had only a sling and a few small stones. But in spirit power, he was unstoppable. And while Goliaths in our lives will come, we need to address those Goliaths spiritually, knowing that any Goliath we have in our life can and will fall. So what can we learn from this about how to face our own giants? Well, I want to share with you today three ways that you can identify and attack giants in your life. The first thing is probably the hardest starting point. And that is to recognize and acknowledge that we have giants. We all have giants. We are all human. We all have flaws. We all have weaknesses. We all face hardships. We all have obstacles. We all have problems. We all have things that tempt us to fall into a downward spiral that makes things bigger and bigger. Giant and more giant. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, Paul gives us a stern warning about allowing our temptations to become giants. He writes, and this is out of the Amplified Version, No temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience, nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance. But God is faithful to his word. He is compassionate and trustworthy, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. But along with the temptation, he has in the past and is now and will always provide the best way out as well so that you will be able to endure it without yielding and will overcome temptation 
with joy. Giants rarely, if ever, start out as the big thing we make them to be. Giants have to begin very small. Think of it like Goliath once being a child. Sins in our lives often start as something little, something that seems innocent and harmless, a little sin that we then allow to continue and then be fed and even encouraged, and we allow it to grow into a giant. Take a look at what's holding you back or what's standing in your way. Something you feel you can't defeat or is holding you back from being or doing something greater with your life. Your giant might be an emotional giant. It might be a negativity giant. It might be a mental giant or something else. Since the key weapon of a giant is fear, our giants, just like fear, tend to paralyze our passions. They paralyze our purpose and they paralyze our desires. So how do we know what our giants are? Well, there are certain characteristics about giants that can help you realize they're giants in your life more than just an annoyance. First of all, giants don't play by the rules. They'll go into your space even when they know they're not allowed. They know the playing field. They know the landscape that they're messing with. They've been in the battlefield a long time, and they know how to twist the truth to convince you that they are superior. They know your weak spot. They know how to make you feel small, weak, helpless, defenseless, insignificant. Giants are arrogant and they make a point to show us what they can use against us. And sometimes we can easily identify what our giants are, but don't think we know how to tackle them, let alone ever defeat them. Well, that brings me to my second point. We must realize that the battle with our giants belongs to the Lord. Giants get bigger and come after us and defeat us again and again because we face them in our own strength. And guess what? When we do that, we lose. We need to realize that this is the Lord's battle. Call on God and pray for his power to go after your giants. Work on them and work against them in his strength. The most important thing, even if we don't know all the answers, is to trust in the Lord. Greg Laurie put it this way. He said, don't look at God in the light of your giant. Instead, look at your giant in the light of God. It's like a perspective shift. You look at your giant one way when you're looking at it in your own power, but when you look at it through God's lens and what he's able to do with it, it gives you a completely different perspective. Ephesians 6 verses 12 and 13 reminds us that we have a weapon to help us. We have been given the full armor of God to help us stand our ground and fight back. The NIV version says this, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand. And this brings me to my third and final point on how to address your giants. Don't be afraid to attack it. And I know sometimes this is the step that we don't want to take. We identify it. We say that we're going to allow God to work on our giant, but then we're not quite ready to go after it whether it's we're afraid, whether it's we're comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time, if you know what I mean. Louis Giglio, in his book, Goliath Must Fall, said these words regarding what we need to say about our giants. He said, there's a giant in my life that's standing over me, and it's got to go down. Now, today, not 10 or 20 years in the future, but in the immediate future now. This giant must go down and will go down and has gone down. It must stop talking to me because God wants me to live free. And yes, we have responsibility in this process. We need to take action by trusting God in faith. I want to say that again. We need to take action by trusting God in faith. In the scripture passage, Goliath came into their land and taunted them. And if you tolerate a Goliath, yours will do the same thing. It will come right up to your door and take over your territory. 
Just like we should never let a giant get on our territory, we should never run away from them. Go after them. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. David went right out to him. And Whatever your giant may be, and I know this is a very difficult thing for many of us to do, force it into the open. Identify it. Name it. Make it more real than it's ever been. That means we stop excusing it. We stop denying it. And we realize we cannot defeat it in our own strength. Because once you bring it out into the open, you stop hiding it. God sees it and you can ask him for help to defeat it. Because when we deny that it exists, we can't ask God to help us defeat it if we deny that it's there. We ask for his strength to not just navigate through, but to help us rise against it. All giants seem larger than they really are. We convince ourselves we won't be able to get control over what the giant is or what it represents. But that giant is not any bigger than God. Every one of us has a lion and bear story. Maybe you're going through one right now or facing a seemingly insurmountable giant. When the crucial moment arrives, remember these words. The battle is the Lord's. The day you take on a giant in your own flesh is the day, very honest, that you are setting yourself up for a very short battle and a very swift defeat. Again, a very short battle and a very swift defeat. Because when we fight on our own and in our own strength and our own flesh, the Goliath or the giant is going to win right back against us very quickly and push us right back into our corner and our period of uncomfortableness or whatever grip it has on us, we will just go right back into our corners and allow it to continue to exist. Instead, give it all to God. There is no giant so great that he is not greater still. And this might not happen overnight. Most of the time it doesn't. This might be an ongoing process where one day you say, I've had enough. Here's my giant God. I'm going to defeat this. And God will stay alongside you as you work through that. Sometimes it involves having to remove some things in your lives for that giant to not have power over you. In the story of David and Goliath, you're probably thinking, well, I can be David. I can overcome my giant. But I'd like to challenge you to think of it this way, the scripture and the story. We aren't David. Jesus is David. Jesus fights the battles for us. Jesus stares down the impossible. He does the work for the giant to fall. And yes, we are called to take action, but human thinking and power alone can never produce a supernatural result. As long as we keep our focus on the problem, and try to take care of it ourselves, the loss column will just keep piling up and nothing will change in our favor. Matter of fact, it will probably get worse. The moment we stop staring at our giant and start staring down our giant with the eyes and power of Christ in us, the hope of victory shifts from us to him. I want to wrap up today with this scripture for you to focus on and meditate regarding this topic. And it's Romans 8.31. And in the Amplified Version, it says this. What then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful against us? As you reflect on these things and prepare to face your giants, I want you to consider these three questions. First, can you identify the giants in your life? Or perhaps I should ask, will you identify the giants in your life? Two, as you enter the battlefield, what are your strategies to overcome your giants? And three, as you map out your battle plan, what needs to stay and what needs to go in your life? Because if you are ready to defeat the giants in your life, those are very serious questions to ask yourself because a lot of times 
Some of the things we allow ourselves to be exposed to or behaviors we allow ourselves to participate in on a daily basis allow those giants to fester and grow. But remember, if God is for us, who can be against us? And I don't know what giant you're facing, and I can't begin to understand all of them, but I do know that God is on your side. He has defeated death and the grave through his son and every foe that we may face. And he wants you to walk alongside him to see what he has done and what he can do for you. I'd love to hear how God speaks to you about giants and how he's helped you defeat them. Drop me a note and share your story. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Query Pro or through my websites, brianquery.com or our podcast website, qonq.com. Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for continuing to support this adventure. Next time, we're going to talk about being social. Exactly how do you use and interpret the words like, comment, and subscribe? I really do appreciate you taking time to tune in, and thanks for listening. And we'll see you back here next time when we'll have more for you on cue.